Hello and welcome to Our Place in Sicily and the first in our series of Room by Room. So while we are going to be taking a long time to do this construction, with stuff going on for a very, very long time probably, we thought we wouldn't wait till we get to each room, but um, I'm gonna sort of give you a, a deep look into each room one at a time. So you can see some of the cool bits and pieces that you would miss like in the great demo part of this. And um, so our first room we're gonna do is the family room. And um, right now we're calling that the Achilles room because there's a Achilles on, on the scene. So let's take a look. about this room, our family room, unless you are talking about this ceiling. So this is Achilles and he's dragging Hector from a chariot. I'm going to um, pop some other information we know about this as we go, but let me just walk you around and I apologize for the sort of echo in this room. And I have my little flashlight here to help. So sort of, if you think about this as a north, south, east, west, we have one of these paintings in the middle on the east and west side. And then around them, and you can see we've lost a lot of detail, but I'm guessing we can find, um, this is Petra, I'm sure we can find a good reference picture to fix that. In the corners, we have the arts pictured. We have music uh, interspersed by more people. I can't read this yet. We're gonna get the ladder out and get up close and see if we can read that soon. And then we have Painting, see my little flashlight here trying to give you a little more lighting. Here's the other west side. Now these were all painted by Giuseppe Schutti, which we've mentioned before. This is Tasso. And in this corner we have writing. You can see Virgil and Homer uh, written in the book. Uh, Foscolo. And this one, well, we're not really sure what was in this painting, but I assume some sort of arts and Dante, who we all know well. So Giuseppe Schutti uh, was a painter. You can see we've lost a lot of the detail here. Um, he was a painter from uh, nearby Zaffarena at Nail, and we have pictures um uh, of his bust his bust is in the center of their town um, and he was known for a couple things i've been told so far is this bright yellow um, and this was painted we're not sure it was the end of the 19th century beginning of the 20th century that he lived um, but he was known for this bright yellow sort of a signature color and these little jewels that he painted here. So you'll see those in a couple of the paintings we have. Um, and he's fantastic at creating dimension. Um, these aren't terribly high ceilings, so you can tell that this isn't actually three-dimensional, but he still does a great job. You can see just barely how he has got a darker shade of brown right here to show depth 
in the painting. Um, and one of the things that fascinates me about this is the background here, which looks sort of like a brown brocade, and what's left of the uh, wallpaper they had here. So I'm not sure what time order these were in other than we know when Giuseppe Schutti lived, but we know that this design was before the wallpaper. Now, was that the design when Giuseppe painted this and sometime later they were smart enough to find a cool brocade style wallpaper to put up? Well, the reason I think that's not true is you come over here and you see these clues, which are the paint marks that Giuseppe would make probably while he was cleaning off one color onto another color of his brush. So the whole room has this sort of paint palette of colors. So you can see all of these and they would drip down. And that seems to be on top. Um, we also can see maybe he had some of this was stencil um, because it seems like he was cleaning, brushing stuff off here and over here, I can show you. Um, so this was probably, uh, even though it seems to be verdigray, I'm going to guess that this is the brown that's up there and he was cleaning off or testing his stencils that he had cut on this side. So while they look blue now, they were likely brown. And we do notice, like see this creeping, uh, whoops, over here, um, verdigray there as well. So must have been something in the pigment. So my guess is that, I don't know if something was painted on this before Giuseppe came here, but we know the house is older. Um, like you just have to, couldn't have painted it when it was first built. We don't know if this room was original. So many things, so many clues we have to find out. Um, we know for a fact that this is not the original floor. Um, we may have found somebody who is going to use this floor. And it's not my favorite floor for this house, but it's very interesting how they put this together. So um, this piece is just one piece. It's the green beige green stripe and they used it there and here and then a solid piece and then these just plain beige pieces and I can imagine that you could have made I don't know hundreds of different patterns with these simple interlocking tiles which I think is genius but um it's just not right for this room but it is right for something so um, all right, so we aren't really sure when things came. We're still working on that. Um, we have found a family member. We found the great granddaughter of the man who built this. And we'll be talking to her more this summer when she comes back to town for the summer. You can see we have a lot of sort of dirt and um, they'll do this room is so dark because of these curtains. Um, when I get back, we're going to do another video here of making this room undark because I think when we take off these curtains, this wallpaper and those curtains and those curtains and all the wallpaper, this room will be much, much brighter. Um, just the nature of how these curtains wrap around, which is very traditional for a Sicilian home to have something like this that comes out from the window, really does make this room moody and dark, which is probably what they were going for and probably why that blue is still so bold. Okay, so we're not sure about the walls. We know the wallpaper came after this, and we know this came after this, so we just don't know where uh, the ceilings came in relationship. And here's another great example of the three-dimensionality that Giuseppe Schutti was able to get more of those jewels there. Uh, and even his, like, this had to have been hand done, his faux marbling is really, really fantastic.
This doorway, it's a beautiful double doorway, still in wood, not painted, beautiful, beautiful handles. It's a very thick door, has heavy duty locks on it. Down here, we go into those holes. Um, this door was essentially a door that um, would have been locked to the public and the public would have come up here to the top of the stairs um, and been invited in. There is, I'm gonna go out and we'll talk about this when we get to this room. There is a spot for a, this is a twisty doorbell that I'm working on elsewhere in the building right now, but so they could have also come here. It's a similar set of doors. But I bring you outside of the room to show you that this is where you would have come up. And we don't know the mystery yet, but we will be discovering this soon, um, is that this has a step up. And that seems odd. And if you look at the doors, the doors kind of look like they were just cut off. Otherwise, they have the exact same tops. So our friend was here who is also um, owns a building company. And he's like, that's odd. And it's odd because also where this railing is, or railing, it's not actually a railing, it's just painted, would usually be a meter above, but it's not. It's short of a meter above. It's about that much shorter. So we think, um, after doing some research so far, that there was an issue with this floor, because there was an issue with this floor and the one next to it, so probably likely that there was an issue here, but this would have been for the public, so, um, and it's a bigger expanse than some of the other rooms. Um, I think it's the biggest room in the house. So we thought maybe they, um, had changed the floor just to make it more structural, but it really looks like it's possible that they just put eight inches of stuff on top of the curved floor, um, or the bending floor, and built this on top of it. So, um, so we've yet to see what it looks like underneath, but it will be something that we dive into this floor regardless. The tile is coming out to put in something a little more appropriate, but um, yeah, there's a mystery below this. And it's interesting because the bedroom is on the same level, which is the room off of this. Um, and it has a different floor as well. And the bathroom, um, which is off of the bedroom, well, neither of those were necessarily bedrooms or bathrooms, but what we are gonna use is also on that same level. So we're not, we're not sure. This is the door that goes into the hall and we're going to close that and we'll talk about that more. This is the one that you probably would have been invited into the room from, these big, nice, beautiful, heavy wooden doors. And notice they are painted on the inside. Um, I probably would like to have those restored to wood on both sides, at least in this room. And then we have these weird doors, um, which go to nowhere. And they also had a curtain set up that would have closed over the top of them to hide them because this is actually the access. I guess you call it an attic. So you can see this is over the staircase. You see how it's curved there. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. You guys are actually all seeing if I extend my filming stick here slowly. You guys are seeing further than I've seen. Yeah, and that's the roof. And you can see that it does not look watertight. It's done a pretty good job, but it's time to change it and make it watertight and then put these beautiful tiles back on. So this is one of those things we need to decide what to do with. There is a, a lovely sort of window there that you can see from the outside. One day I was out there and I was like, I don't know where that window is because I hadn't looked into this room and then I found it. And it's interesting too. So this has doors very similar to 
everything else we've seen. But at some point, and we've seen this on a couple of our doors, they put metal on it. Um, and I don't know if that was just to hold them up, keep them solid, protect them from the elements. We're not sure. So, um, what will we do here? One of our ideas is to put sort of like a hidden door there. So basically they make doors here that um, just, you know, the wall just continues on. And we would just sort of, you would just think that, that was a wall. Um, so maybe that's what we'll do. We probably won't need any regular access to that once we get everything fixed here. Um, so we could put a piece of furniture in front of it. Um, and then here's a, another one of the, the drapes, which goes into the room that will be our bedroom, but very likely was something different. Um, that is, it has um, the mural of Archimedes. So very much a sort of showy kind of room. We know that this family was um, involved, I believe, in education, perhaps a professor um, and judges and um, just, you know, smarty pants in the best way. Um, but yeah, so many mysteries. But I think when we take these, um, these curtains out and this wallpaper off, it'll look bright. Now, we're having a discussion about, in every room, which walls should we keep? Um, these are the walls that I'm not too sure about keeping. I don't mean keeping, we're gonna keep the walls, uh, except we are gonna make an opening here. So let me back up to show you this. Um, but keeping the texture, uh, they rub off a little bit, they're powdery, so we would need to, um, uh, stabilize them so, so you didn't end up funny colored every time you came to visit. So I do like that there's these paints up here, and, but I don't love this and I really don't care for this decoration. Um, it's funny, it's very old, but to me it reads very um, 1980s do-it-yourself stencils. So um, it's not my favorite. It, it, and also we might have to do something because maybe this floor will go down and this wall will get longer. So um, I'd love to know your thoughts on what you would do with the walls here, especially since you don't know what we're gonna do with the walls in other places. I don't think we do a wallpaper. Um, we're gonna spend enough time trying to stabilize this and hopefully get some of this back. Um, it's really time to call in a conservator specialist who can help me, um, help tell me what to do and can consult um, so we can start doing it. I'm going to find out who all these people are. Um, I, well, I know who Dante is. I think you guys probably know who Dante is, but I'll maybe pop up some, some information on each of these people and if I can find a picture too. So, in our room by room, we're getting a little more detailed. Um, all right, so we've talked about the floor, we've talked about the doors. Let's talk about this beautiful balcony. So this has got um, one of the biggest balconies. It's not exceptional, it's maybe only mm, a foot or 18 inches bigger. And, um, but it is lovely. And I haven't decided, like, would I put, like, chairs out there? Would I put chairs just inside that I would pull out there? Um, definitely plants. Um, and again, this has these very lovely doors. So, or, uh, doors and this camera adjust so that you have the opportunity to let light in. Um, our doors here on the front of the house, these are probably in the best shape, but they are not in good shape. Uh, and I'm thinking of changing them. And here's my thought. I know you guys probably are looking at this and saying, I love that. I love them too. But living here, what I know is I like fresh air, um, but I also like privacy. So if I open these, 
blinds, I still am not getting fresh air. Um, so if I want fresh air, I just basically have to open them full and I, I don't have privacy. I'm not actually able to like block some of the sun. Um, so I'm really looking at, and it's funny, you can see that our neighbor across the street has something very similar to the type I want, which is shutters um, that could open and those will open out onto the balcony and the doors inside would open into the house. So we could have full glass here and we could keep the shutters open all the time if we didn't want any privacy, but I have the option of having shutters semi-closed like our neighbor does. Um, so I can have it open, but also, you know, have some privacy or if it was sunny, I could still have a fresh breeze in here. Anyways, what do you guys think? And what do you think for color? I think originally these were green. The outside is, shows some green paint, but also these are white. Um, so I, I would love a doorway in. I would love a floor way in. What do you think about the walls? What do you think about the ceiling? Do you think it needs to be taken all the way back? Would you replace curtains, put some other curtains there? Or do you think, hmm, it's past curtain time. I am thinking this is the only um, beautiful sort of gold um, curtain topper here. And we're thinking of using that over um, my younger daughter's bed with a little bit of uh, flowy fabric to make like a headboard canopy. But that is this room and all the mysteries and the weird spaces and the beautiful doors. I've kind of seen all the corners of this. It does look like, for those of you who have wallpaper interest, that they have used this teeny tiny little um, wallpaper um, border along the top and along the bottom, you can kind of see it there. So they would have put the brown paper down first and then put that little bit of trim. Very reminiscent of a lot of Giuseppe Schutti's pieces here. So, what would you do first in this room? And, uh, what excites you most about this room. I love this room. Um, I love the detail in the room. I'm a little bit scared about how much work needs to be done here, but I think even when we just wash up this wall and take the wallpaper off, um, washing from the mural down will make this look less scary, bringing some light in, you know, fixing this little corner, which looks like it should be easy to fix. I will be testing all of my art training for that. And uh, this is a family room, so we're gonna put a TV here. Oh, oh my goodness. How many minutes in? I didn't even tell you. I keep telling you. We're gonna tell you what we're gonna do with this door, and I haven't told you. So the next room over is our living room. And as I explained it to Italians, living room is the family room without the TV. So um, because we don't know exactly how we'll be using this house besides to live in, like will we entertain, who will come visit, will we have lots of family, lots of friends, some kind of events, will we rent it out occasionally, we want lots of options. And one of the options would be to have both the living room next door and the family room be open. So right now the current plan is to sort of shut this door and put a big opening between these two with sort of a, it's like maybe like a built-in shelving unit there. And this door, this giant, there'll be a door here that can open and close. So if we want to have a party, it's a, it's a two, uh, a two room giant space. And I'm very, very excited about the possibilities with that. Um, and uh, maybe I'll pop in a picture from the other room looking in. And we'll do that now.
And that's the end of our first room by room tour, uh, our family room here at our abandoned Palazzo restoration project, renovation project. Hope you liked it. Please leave questions and comments. That's what these particular videos are for, is for you to get really an in-depth look, room by room, get up close, and um, if you have questions, now's the time to ask. Thanks for watching.